With the release of the Wii U, I'm going to do something a little different. Let's have a look back on Nintendo's last video game console, the Wii. It's no secret that for the longest time, the video game industry has been obsessed with graphics. Even from back in the earliest days in the industry, game developers and console manufacturers alike have been stuck in this kind of graphics pissing contest, where they think that having the most advanced graphics automatically equals having the most innovative games. I can't tell you how many times I've seen shit ass games get released that the developers think they can get by because the graphics are good. Or what's worse is when otherwise good games get panned by critics because their graphical gimmicks aren't up to par. To me, this has never made sense. It'd be like if people thought House of the Dead was a better movie than Citizen Kane because it's in widescreen and colour. Or if people were to judge a book based off the bloody font it was written in. And don't give me any of that, oh, but I want good graphics and good gameplay bullshit, because when you say that, you're putting graphics on the same level of importance as gameplay. I'm not saying graphics have no importance, but they are one of the more superficial things you can judge a game by. So along comes the latest generation of game consoles, with Microsoft and Sony strutting out their Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, two colossal and expensive powerhouses of consoles, each boasting to have the most bestest and awesomest graphics ever made as their main selling point. But then, out comes Nintendo with their new console, the Wii. It doesn't have the graphical horsepower of its competition, only being roughly a third as powerful, but as a result the console would be more affordable and less prone to hardware failure. But Nintendo's biggest claim was the Wii's new control scheme, where instead of button mashing on a gamepad, players would now control their games using one-to-one -one motion controls, where any movement they made with their controller would be translated into action on the screen. Nintendo was taking a big gamble here. They'd bet all their chips that gamers would value this new creative form of gameplay over graphics. But to everyone's amazement, it worked, and the Nintendo Wii sold more than the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 combined. And I have to say, I got really excited. Just looking at the Wii made my imagination run wild with the possibilities. This new control scheme could potentially change the way we played video games, opening the door to new genres of games we'd never seen before, and forever changing the way we played the old. Developers would finally stop pouring all their resources into superficial graphics that nobody cared about, and instead invest it towards new and exciting forms of game design. I couldn't wait. But I waited, and waited, and waited, and waited, and what the hell? Where were all the new games I was waiting for? Sure, Nintendo was releasing some of their first party titles every now and then, but where are all the other games? The PS3 has no games? Bullshit! The Nintendo Wii had no games. Month after month, the PS3 and 360 would be getting these new big titles released for them, and yet the Wii would just stagnate. What was going on here? Well, it turned out that many game developers outright refused to make any games for the Wii because this hardware wasn't up to par. You'd ask game developers why they weren't making any Wii games, and they'd respond because there was no hardcore games on the Wii. But then the only reason why there were no hardcore games on the Wii was because they weren't making any games for them. And so the Wii was stuck in this kind of no games limbo, where nobody was making games for it because nobody was making games for it. And so this went on month after month, year after year. Every year at E3, Nintendo would basically show up, shrug, and go, uh, yeah, uh, we, we, we got nothing. Wii gamers would basically shit our pants with excitement when even the most mediocre third-party exclusives would come out. Not necessarily because they were any good, but just because we got excited that, holy shit, somebody actually made a game for the Wii. Whenever you'd go into a game store, there'd only be two kinds of third-party games on the Wii shelf. First, you had the shovelware. Those cheap, rushed, buggy, knockoff games that were just made to cash in on the Wii success. And while sure, every console has their fair share of shovelware on it, the amount of shovelware on the Wii was disproportionately high, because the Wii had no other games to even things out. And secondly, you had ports of titles from other consoles to the Wii, and this would just never work. The Wii was more powerful than the PS2, but less powerful than the PS3. So as a result, you'd either be upporting a game from the PS2, so you'd have a last-gen game that wouldn't take advantage of the Wii's capabilities, or you'd be downporting from the 360 or PS3, which would mean they'd basically have to disembowel the game in order to get it to work on the bloody thing. 
But the bigger problem with the ports was the control scheme. They'd be taking a game which used to be controlled by buttons and try to map it to motions. So as a result, a game that used to consist of just random button mashing would now just be random Wiimote wiggling, and hence the infamous waggle that everyone hates so much. So porting to the Wii would just never work. The only way to make a good Wii game is to specifically design it for the machine's unique hardware, and yet nobody would do it. It was only nearing the end of the Wii's lifespan that eventually some developers figured, hey, since everyone's bought one of these Wii things, maybe we should, oh, I don't know, make a game for it or something? And so after only about five fucking years into the Wii's life cycle, we finally started to see some good games be released for the system that actually started to make some use of the console's hidden potential. And you know what? They were pretty good. Finally, we started to get a glimpse at what this machine was capable of, with a lot of the games rivaling the quality of titles seen on the PS3 and 360. But most of these games ended up selling poorly, and it was because it was too little, too late. We shouldn't have had to have waited five years for the first good Wii games to come out, they should have been available from launch. By the time these games finally came out, we'd moved on. Most of us had either sold our Wii second hand, or they were gathering dust in a closet somewhere. So, now we have Nintendo's new console, the Wii U, which boasts to have more, better, awesome graphics, and has abandoned motion controls in favour of going back to a more traditional gamepad. And I can't help but feel underwhelmed. Looks like Nintendo's gone, well, this whole creativity and innovation thing didn't work out, better get back to that hardware pissing contest. Looking back on the Wii, I have mixed feelings. It was a good little console, and it had quite a few great games on it, I mean, off the top of my head, games like Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2, Metroid Prime Trilogy, and Skyward Sword are probably some of the best games of this console generation, but I can't help but look back and just see the machine's wasted potential. I just wonder what it would have been like if at least one developer had have actually tried to make a game for the bloody thing. But at least I can take solace in the fact that there was a time that someone tried to step out of the arms race and prove that gamers preferred innovation over graphics.